So thanks for joining me tonight. I've produced this video with this voiceover because the last video had a lot of music and quite a few people were saying they couldn't hear it. So this demonstration tonight is a, a, a Lena Gemzo style painting. This was the first time that I had tried this style of painting. The, the colours that you can see there are raw sienna, burnt sienna, Payne's grey, indigo and lamp black. And so all I did was just squeeze them straight out of the tubes onto that uh, plastic spatula. That plastic spatula was um, just the lid of a butter soft, like just a tub of uh, butter, and I cut the, uh, the, the rectangle out of the lid. So that's what I used for the painting demonstration. So, um, so yeah, I just uh, chose some colours that I thought might work, uh, and I hadn't really used lamp black for a very, very long time, actually. So, um, so yeah, the, the page is a full sheet of uh, Reeves BFK etching paper, and um, I taped it at the top uh, using uh, 3M Magic Tape, and then I'm using this really wide hate brush here to wet the page, and, and I'm wetting it quite considerably, like more than I would normally wet the page. Uh, I'm wetting that with that wide hate brush, and, and actually, in retrospect, since I've obviously finished this painting now, um, I think I actually should have wet it even more, and I probably could have even wet under the page, you know, so the whole paper was very, very wet. It, I, I think, you know, in some ways that might work out better. So I'm wetting the page, and because it's only taped at the top, the, the paper obviously expands when it gets wet, but because it's only taped at the top, it can expand out in all of those other three directions, and that means that it won't warp or buckle. It'll just stay flat to the to the uh, board that it's attached onto. So I'm just starting to apply the the pigment there, and and really, th this was the first time I'd ever used a plastic spatula like this. It was a bit strange, and really felt like I was totally messing up but you can see obviously the um the raw sienna down the bottom there and and a fair bit of uh indigo panes gray and lamp black up the top and then i just used the edge of the spatula to start to create some landforms i suppose you know i'm always tending towards mountains and water and landscape and that sort of thing uh, and then and then because the, I started to tilt the board up. As you can see, I started to tilt it up. Again, there wasn't a lot of movement of the, the, the watercolour pigment, so I started trying to wet it a bit more with that hake brush and just get a bit more water onto the page so that there was a bit more movement. So there was a fair bit of pigment still left on the spatula, so I thought I would just apply a bit more and give a little bit more balance to the landscape. And so I ended up applying even more water this time to just get some more movement of the pigment. So as you can see, the board is tilted away from me, and that's why the pigment's you know, obviously running in that direction. You can see a bit of um, Payne's grey or indigo burst forth then. So you can see the water just moves down through that pigment and then comes out the other side and carries with it a lot of the pigment. And then I'm using a, a spray bottle here. I use a spray bottle in a lot of my painting. The, the spray bottle that I use is just a Nylex trigger sprayer it's called. I just got it from Bunnings, but you could use any just plant sprayer really. So I'm tilting the board up obviously towards me this time and then the pigment is just running down through. It's quite amazing to watch the pigment move when it's really wet it, it hasn't actually settled into the paper yet and so you can tilt it and it'll look like it's stained the page and then you'll tilt it back and then it hasn't stained the page. It's quite incredible. So I'm just cleaning up a bit. 
so that when I start tilting in other directions, those runs that have come off the page don't end up coming back onto the page somewhere else where I don't want them. And this is where it's pretty, pretty cool actually. You can see all that pigment up in the top there, just heading north and, and, and actually you, that could be a, a whole bunch of trees off in the distance if you, if you kept that and just worked with that. You could turn that into some beautiful forests actually. And so really throughout this process I was just trying to figure out what I thought was the right thing to do, you know, to try and create something that worked, but also to try not to create something too hard so that I could just, you know, go with the process really and just try and experiment and see what happened. Yeah, it's pretty amazing when you start tilting it away and then it all just starts coming up off that line. And because there's dry paper down the bottom there, that's preventing the, the pigment from going any further. So it's pooling and then combining together and then I'm tilting it away. And then it's running away as you can see there. So you can see the indigo and paints grey up the top. I'm just using a wide hate brush there to just take a little bit of that out. Just a wet hate brush. But I didn't want to use a brush too much because it's beautiful and soft down the bottom there, like beautiful. And I really like where that water is, you know, where you can see that the white in the page. To me, that just looks just like water with light on it. And so here what I thought I would do is just try using the, the, the spatula again or whatever you want to call it, the Buttersoft container lid, and, and scrape into the paper. So you know, indent into the paper quite firmly. And what we know happens when you do that is that pigment will sit into those areas and go very dark. Because you've almost scored the paper and that means it'll be more absorbent and then that'll soak up the pigment. So I thought I'd just try that, just try some different ways of using that spatula to make different marks. And here I'm just creating again some you know, distant mountains or that sort of thing. And these didn't end up turning out actually, I don't, you know, for some reason these, I obviously didn't quite press um, firm enough for the pigment to get uh, sucked into the page when I did those those ones in that direction, the vertical lines there. And that's just using the spatula again to just create a lead in for the eye really, a lead in to the, the main subject matter. And then again I'm creating just a, a mountain and actually what this reminds me of the, is the, uh, the mountain that I used to see out of my house from Deloraine called Quamby Bluff and that was just right outside my window and that just looks just like it. Although I wasn't thinking about that at the time but now that I'm looking at it that's what it makes me think of. That's Deloraine in Tasmania. 
it's where I used to live and that's where uh, I, I was taught uh, by Tony Smybert, pretty amazing watercolorist and very generous man. So I think, you know, on, on the whole, this has been a pretty um, amazing experience. To do this for the very first time is, is, is a really fun thing to do and to be able to share that, uh, you know, with, with you guys is, is, is pretty cool. So since this time I've done a, a few other ones, but actually this is, this is still my favourite painting out of all of them, the very first one, which is off, off in the way. So I just used the wide hake brush and the butter soft container lid, and uh, and really, you know, that's that's all I used, and I just used the uh, the board to tilt it and move it around and and see what we could create really, and I really like the raw sienna, that warmth in the foreground, and and I really love that the, that landscape. It's a beautiful landscape. So um, yeah, I th I think you know go and have a try doing this and it doesn't need to be on a full page of watercolor like this was um 56 centimeters by i think 76 seven centimeters so quite a big piece of um watercolor paper but you could do it on a on a much smaller scale so i think i'll be doing some more of these and i actually and i have done of course so uh, thanks for joining me and watching this tonight. I, I hope this was helpful. I hope it was better with this audio compared to when the music was on and I apologize for that and I am creating more videos now with uh, less music. So if you like this video then please uh, press like and if you would like to know about future videos then press the subscribe button and press the bell button. And you may have noticed that down in the description there's a link to my website and that's where you can buy these original paintings. Any paintings that I think are, uh, are good enough quality will be for sale on there with free shipping worldwide. So you can see there the Buttersoft that I used. But you could use anything really. You could use something. That one was potentially a little bit soft. But, um, but you could use anything like that Neapolitan ice cream container lid there. Like you could use that. It was a bit firmer and I could try that next time. But I, but I think you could even try a, a palette knife. You could really try anything. So thank you for joining me tonight. It's been great fun. And, um, and I'll see you in the next one. So thank you and good night.